creation there at the start before the beginning of time with no point of reference you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of You speak a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath the planets fall but the stars were made to worship so alive God of your promise you don't speak in vain syllable empty your voice. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. Ooh. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath. you so alive if the stars are made to worship so alive if the mountains bow in reverence so alive if the oceans roar your greatness so alive for if everything exists to lift you high so alive, if the wind was where you send it, so alive. If the rocks cry out in silence, so alive. If the sum of all our praises still falls shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. special welcome to everyone who's listening on our live streaming on this second Sunday after Pentecost. So just a few announcements, just a reminder that we're um, doing our offering into the pews. So um, Al will be passing the plate this way and Melissa, she'll be bringing the plate in to the people from this way and so on. And of course, we do have Holy Communion tonight and um, Al will be ushering the appropriate number 
for up here. Just a reminder of our attendance and involvement card. It's also a registration for Holy Communion and lots of activities still coming up in this month of June, so look that over. And also want to mention that it is Father's Day on Sunday, so we have a little gift here. God is my strength and power for men over the age of 18. And you need one for a special friend or something like that, or somebody who can use the booster, what have you, feel free to take an extra one. There are extra ones. And you'll see what it is when you open it up. It's for your, um, your phone, your, the, the phone, the iPhone, and so on. And of course, we're sort of culminating with our Her Health Women's Baby Bottle Campaign. Um, if you didn't get one, you can take one. There's some on the table or bring it back with your change of dollar bills or checks or what have you for the support of Her Health Women's Ministry. Also, um, my wife will be out after church with steaks, two for $20, the T-bone steaks for St. Paul's Lutheran School. Also, we have some mixed fruit jellies out there, you two different um, colors, and then also peach jam, buy for $25 just like last year, or $6 a jar. And then we do have that patriotic concert coming up on July 10th at the Browns Theater in Lamar's. So if you're interested in that, um, the time is drawing near when we'll hopefully have 100 or 110. If we don't, then we'll open that up to the public, and they will do that in Lamar's. But just so if you know, the theater will probably be full. So if you have friends who would like to go as well as yourself, that is certainly um, okay. Hugs for Dad, one of our books from our Redeemer Library, or Afraid. And it does talk about demon possession and spiritual warfare in America. And that's what our sermon theme is going to be about this evening and for Sunday, demon possession and spiritual warfare in America. That is our text, as you'll notice from the scripture readings. Deeper still as you call me Deeper 
Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love Love, you're a good, good father It's who you are, it's who you are It's who you are and I'm loved by you It's who I am, it's who I am It's who I am, who I am. you're a good, good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We continue with the intro. Be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. You who have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again. You will increase my greatness and comfort me again. I will sing praises to you with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. And my tongue will walk and talk of your righteous help all the day long, for they have been put to shame and disappointed who sought to do me hurt. <coughs> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Brothers, sisters, come down to that river guaranteed you'll never be the same there's a fountain flowing from the heart of the savior bring your sins and all your guilty stain let that river of life wash it all away if you've been searching carrying burdens if you've been lost and looking for a home 
been drifting something is missing you should know that you are not alone hey brothers sisters come on down to that river guaranteed you'll never be the same there's a fountain flowing from the heart of the savior to the river Come as you are, no time to waste Open your heart, don't be afraid Jump on in, the water is fine There's healing in the river of life Come as you are, no time to waste Open your heart, don't be afraid Jump on in, the water is fine There's healing in the river of life Brothers, sisters, come on down to that river Guaranteed you'll never be the same Oh, brother, sister Come on down to that river Guaranteed you'll never be the same There's a fountain flowing From the heart of the Savior Bring your sins and all your guilty stains By the blood of Jesus everything will change Let that river of life wash it all away Come on down to the river. Come on down to the river. Come on down to the river. Let that river of life wash it all away. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Cast out all sins and evil desires from us and pour into our hearts your Holy Spirit to guide us into all blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We continue with our Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 65. I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here am I, here am I, to a nation that was not called by my name. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices of people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and making offerings on bricks, who sit in tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat pig's flesh and broth of tainted meat is in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their bosom both your iniquities and your father's iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they made offerings on the mountains and insulted me on the hills, I will measure into their bosom payment for their former deeds. Thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it, so I will do for my servants' sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth offspring from Jacob and from Judah possessions of my mountains. My chosen shall possess it, and my servants shall dwell there. This is the word of the Lord. In the epistle from the third chapter of Galatians. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian, for in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, 
heirs according to promise. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the Alleluia. According to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, and he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs were feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. This evening we will not have a children's message, so we continue with the hymn of the day.
of Galilee, which reminds us, as the psalmist describes God as the one who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the tumult of the peoples. The seas are a symbol of chaos and the powers of evil, and Jesus demonstrates his power over both the forces of nature and over the forces of evil, driving away the chaos and bringing a sense of calm in both texts, the words of Jesus are obeyed. Jesus tells the waves to be still, and they are still. The storm is calm. And in our text for this evening, the demons are driven out, and in the end, this once ravaged and deranged man is now told to go out and tell others what Jesus has done for him. Satan the destroyer has been dismissed at the cross, we know that, we celebrated Easter, and will one day be totally destroyed. In the meantime, we walk here on this earth. In the book, Hell from the Heavens, the author describes the epic story of the largest single ship attack of World War II. The date was April 16, 1945, right at the end of the war, but the war was not yet over. The battle was Okinawa. The target was the USS Laffey, a battle-hardened destroyer, a ship primarily assigned to protect other ships from the submarines. And the Laffey had been involved in three prior assaults in the Pacific. The ship had seen combat, but nothing prepared them and prepared the crew for this 80-minute ordeal in which they were targeted repeatedly by suicidal Japanese pilots. And by the time the smoke settled, they'd been hit by 22 suicidal pilot attacks. And yet, while they sustained significant damage, they were not destroyed. And it's this story that sets us up for another epic battle, one that Jesus enters into in Luke chapter 8. The scene is moments after Jesus has calmed the waves, the wild waves of the Sea of Galilee. 
And now he enters uncharted territory, the Gerasenes. Sounds almost ominous, doesn't it? Pagan property, a dismal place where the demons roamed. And so we read, when Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. This guy was in rough shape. He was a streaker in today's language who hung out with the skeletons. He didn't wear clothes and he lived in the tombs. People had attempted to keep him under lock and key, but he easily broke free. Crazy man, people would call him, and we probably would say the same even today. And as Jesus and the disciples haul the boat up on shore, Jesus comes face to face with the deranged demons. Scary situation. His name, Legion. And Luke explains that this is because many demons had gone into him. A legion was a unit of Roman soldiers numbering around 6,000. Okay, can you imagine the damage that thousands of demons were inflicting on this poor man? But while Jesus is outnumbered, he is not outmatched. And we want to always remember that for our own personal lives too, when situations come up which are hard to handle and hard to deal with. We pay attention to the verbiage of the story. We find out who is in control of the battle and still is control of the battles that we face in this world today. It is Jesus. The demons are begging Jesus not to obliterate them completely by sending them into the abyss, that eternal destination of the damned. You don't beg if you're in control. And they are begging. They are not in control anymore. Like a prisoner of war who begs his captors for leniency, or a criminal who begs the judge to reduce the sentence, they beg Jesus to go easy on them, to send them into the herd of swine, and Jesus does it. What happens? Luke records, the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. They were sunk. What the Japanese suicidal pilots are unable to do to the USS Laffey, the demons do to the pigs who meet their watery graves. But that's just the beginning of this situation. The story does not end here. We go back to the port man. Where is he? He is free. He is sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. It's the posture of a disciple in Jewish culture. To sit at someone's feet is to become a disciple of the rabbi. And this man is ready to stick now with Jesus. In fact, he begs that he might be with him. There's that language again, recognizing that Jesus is in control. And Jesus says, though, to him, we turn to your home and declare how much God has done for you. In other words, share your story. And that's what Jesus tells us to do throughout our lives, too. Share our story. The man wants to be a student, but Jesus calls him to be a storyteller. Go and tell those who saw your previous way of life how much I've done for you. Tell them the story of the hell that you went through. Tell them of the one who delivered you from the devil. So this story that Luke narrates is epic, similar to the story of the USS Laffey. It's a story of warfare. The Bible speaks of our struggle against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And here's how it breaks down. The devil is a destroyer. And John chapter 10 says that he's come to kill and to destroy. And Revelation chapter 9 
calls him the angel of the bottomless pit, the abyss, hell, if you will. Make no mistake, Satan and his minions have one goal, and one goal only, to destroy. One writer once said, Satan has no constructive purpose of his own. His tactics are simply to thwart God and destroy man. So think of what they destroy in this man. They destroy, first of all, we can see that his dignity, naked, living among the dead. They destroy his relationships, ostracized from his community, his family, living alone, and when cast out into the herd of pigs, what do the pigs do? They destroy the evil spirits. And to this day, we see Satan's destruction forces at play in the lives of people, perhaps even in our own lives at times. Some examples, destroying marriages, destroying relationships, destroying livelihoods, destroying the lives of the unborn, destroying churches, destroying the mental health of individuals, destroying the lives of the unborn, destroying churches, destroying the mental health of individuals. One assault after another, and we can name many, many more. Verse 29 says, For many a time it, the evil spirit, had seized him. Many a time, one after another, to the point of exhaustion even. When we're ready to admit defeat, sometimes our lives feel like the USS Slap as we endure one suicide plane slamming into us after another, always trying to sink us, trying to let us waver even in our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some might ask, are there demons still roaming the skies and the seas today, looking there, waiting to destroy us? If we're asking, are there people who suffer from demon possession like this man, we would say, yes. And yet, we believe that demons, while they may not always possess the soul of an individual as visibly as in this story, but they can cause people significant distress and cause them to do destructive things. We think about people in the grip of drug abuse or alcohol addiction or caught up in destructive lusts of the flesh that inflict pain not only on them, but on others around them. Statistics show, we're not talking about church statistics or Christian statistics, but world or national statistics say that the average age of pornography is eight. Eight years of age. That's the average age. That means there are people below the age of eight and then above about the age of eight. You would think it would be teenagers or young adults or, or what have you, but that's how far down we have come. So whether these forces are chemical or psychological, there can be little doubt that they are still the remnants of a fallen world that Satan is always exploiting. So our youth who are making poor decisions right now with marijuana dabbing, and if you don't know what that is, Google it, and you'll find out what it means. The drinking and the other risky behaviors, but it's not only with our youth. All you have to do is read Dear Abby and Dear Ann Landers and so on, and you talk about, you know, you read about people in three relationships, four people involved in a relationship, and it, it never ends. Men and men, women and women, and back and forth. Whatever kind of thoughts you can think about all of that. And then, of course, we have the short-term mental health facilities, sometimes threatening of themselves, 
And truth be told, we are all fighting demons at one time or another, some people more than others. We might not call it demons, but all those situations out there. We can see the wake of destruction that's left in the lives of people. So when we find ourselves here, what do we do? Well, we know that we cling to the gospel. We cling to the word, and the gospel proclaims Jesus comes to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John chapter 3. And while Satan claims to be the destroyer, the gospel proclaims that Satan the destroyer has been disarmed at the cross and will one day be totally destroyed. The Apostle Paul says that Jesus has disarmed the power of the devil, making a public spectacle of him, triumphing over him by the cross. And so we cling to Jesus knowing that by his death and resurrection, he has destroyed already Satan's power and would deliver us from the destruction that the devil desires to inflict upon us. So we find this as we turn to two places. We go back to our baptism, and sometimes this is lost in the modern baptismal rite, but in the years past, and sometimes Pastor Sensei even mentions it, that baptism is seen as a form of exorcism. Our Lutheran service book, Altar Book, includes an alternate form of baptism service based on Martin Luther's baptismal rite. In it, the baptizer says, depart, you unclean spirit, and make room for the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Speaking of baptism, notice what happens to the herd of pigs that the demons are cast into. They rush down the steep embankment and are drowned, drowned in the water. And isn't that what baptism signifies? Martin Luther says it indicates that the old Adam in us, perhaps we could say the demons in our lives instead of the old Adam, should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and died with all sins and evil desires. Most of us remember learning that in catechism. And so when we face our demons, whatever they are, we declare over them that we are baptized that those demons have no power over us. Which brings us to the second place we turn to. We go back to the words of the Bible. We go to the clear words of God that proclaim Jesus' victorious death on the cross, the forgiveness of sins it won, and the power of God over the onslaughts of Satan that it is. He who is in you is greater than who is in the world, from 1 John chapter 4. And then, as we continue to experience the deliverance of Jesus in our lives, we simply tell our story. Like those sailors aboard the USS Laffey who limp away from battle, yes, scarred, yet victorious, and they tell the story, even to this day. Like the man who once was demon-possessed, who was told by Jesus to return to his home and declare what God has done for him. We, too, have a story to tell. And that story begins at home. We tell those who know us well what Jesus has done for <coughs> us. That Jesus has his way in our hearts, back to the promises of baptism, back to the truths of the Bible. And while perhaps we burn many bridges in our community and even maybe hurt many who are closest to us, we know and we feel compelled to come home and declare how much God has done for us. And we can show our thankfulness to God in all of the good works we do then in the name of Christ. The good works for our family members our friends, and even our non-Christian friends. Sometimes we go through hell in our lives, but God always wants to give us heaven. Amen.
And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We boldly confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers. We pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O King of kings and Lord of lords, you call out to every nation of the earth, seeking repentance and justice, even as they rebel against your will. Work repentance in all civil leaders. Use them to defend the weak and to punish the guilty, that the church may have free course to preach the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, your Son sent the man formerly possessed by demons to declare how much God has done for him. May your church also, rescued from the snares of the devil, proclaim how much Jesus has done for us. Lord, in your mercy. Here. Compassionate Father, from whom all fatherhood is named, we give you thanks for earthly fathers. Give them confidence in their station, zeal for their tasks to care for their families faithfully. Make them examples to their children of godly life and love of your word. Bless their work of bringing up children in the fear and instruction of the Lord, and give them the comfort of your absolution over all their shortcomings. Bless those celebrating birthdays, Chris Cook, 75 years, and Bruce Timmons, 85 years. Bless those celebrating anniversaries, Howard and Kay Ness, 62 years, Mark and Alice Peterson, 40 years, and newly married soon, Drayson and Kaylin Lundgren, granddaughter of Tony Hardick, and Kyle and Megan Fletcher, granddaughter of Howard and Kay Ness. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, you have established governments and institutions for good order and our well-being. Guide and grant wisdom to leaders and citizens. Give peace, security, and good laws to our own country, our cities, and our communities. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, your Son, Jesus, had pity on the man afflicted with an abundance of demons. Have mercy now on the afflictions that beset Otto Kunz's mass on his colon and grandfather of Matt Kunze. Lynn Templeton, hospitalized with enlarged heart and low oxygen. Howard Ness, hospitalized with severe neuropathy. Craig Severi, hospitalized with dementia and kidney problems. Lily Meyer, upcoming spinal fusion surgery and granddaughter of Sandy Zalmi. The family of Al Winger, brother of Arnie Heck. And also, Lord, we remember the family of Don Waring, cousin of Kay Fortner and Yvonne Beck. Give them healing, strength, 
and an increase of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, Isaiah spoke of the new vine full of blessing that will not be destroyed. Grant us faithfully to eat and drink our Lord's own body and blood given in the fellowship of this altar. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Father, you know the condition of our souls that we frequently wander into sins, vice, and danger. Hear our prayers for the sake of Christ, who defeated legions of demons, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our offerings, and when we finish basically with our offerings, we'll do the offerings for <laughs> Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which He is betrayed, took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to His disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Our Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Depart in peace, serve the Lord, your sins are forgiven. Amen. And we pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that, on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.